is about which is safe your spirit or your soul which one that is safe so my first question goes like this what is the difference between salvation of the spirit and salvation of the soul thank you sir yeah thank you so much uh, by the grace of god you know by assumption most of us when we see somebody who have not received christ we say oh let's go and win soul okay that is what we normally the phrase we normally use somebody who have not received christ like a muslim say oh let's go and win soul that is by assumption hallelujah now <clears throat> salvation that is a, a huge difference between salvation of the spirit and the salvation of the soul. According to your question, a spirit can be won immediately, but to win a soul, it takes a gradual process. Now, I repeat again, to win a spirit is just within one minute. That means when you approach someone and preach to depict the gospel and the person accept jesus as his lord and personal savior you know what happened that spirit got saved that spirit that was lost in adam you know that was uh, that lost contact with god now became alive hallelujah there is no more demarcation anymore now you have right to approach God. Now you can speak to God. That is what called spirit uh, sa saving of the spirit. And I think Jesus is talking about to be born again. So when one born again, what happened that his spirit that was dead in Adam became alive, you know, became alive again. That is what it means to save a spirit. Hallelujah. Now Remember, when God created you, God created a spirit being. We have thought about the man. So you, God created you a spirit. And for you to contact the physical realm, he gave you a body and a soul. So we are a spirit being that live inside a body. Because the spirit cannot touch this cup. The spirit cannot drink water. So for you to be able to contact the physical realm, God give us what is called a body. Now, we are spirit, but live inside the body and also have a soul. Hallelujah. So, so that you can be able to communicate, so that you can hear me. A spirit can speak, you can hear. You can't touch, a spirit can't touch you. Hallelujah. That is whom we are. I think the Bible agree with us. Let's go to the, the first scripture. Let's go to First Peter chapter 1, 3 and 14 to see if the scripture agree what I have just said now. Thank you. 13 to 14. And, and it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live for 14 for our lord jesus christ has showed me that i must i must soon live this earthly life amen. amen thank you very much now this is peter when he was about to you know to leave this earth king james version say yeah i think it meets as long as i am in this tabernacle what is it which tabernacle is talking about his body is a tabernacle okay that my our body is a temple of god he said to start up by putting you in remembrance knowing that shortly i must put this tobacco off so the we are a spirit now his spirit is the one that is going to take off that is why when somebody dies, we say the person has passed on Hallelujah. So now from the scripture, you agree with me that we are 
spirit, but we live inside a body. Hallelujah. Remember in Adam, in Adam, every human being who came uh, sin, and that sin made us demarcation. We can't communicate with God. So that is why when some when you preach the gospel, when someone receives Christ, immediately that spirit that was dead in Adam became alive. That is the person that bo become born again. What saved them is his spirit. Have you wondered why some a pastor, why many people who are who have Christ in them, who are born again, but they commit atrocities? Have you not wondered why? These are people who are having salvation of the spirit, but they commit atrocity, they lie, they do all sorts of things. Does it not bother you? Let's also co to confirm to confirm this. Let's go to the second Corinthians chapter 5, 1 to 4, please. Let's hear what Paul have to tell Corinthians, also Corinthian church. I'm reading from King James Version. He said, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a an house not made with hands, internal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we will be unclothed, but clothed upon the mortality, might be swallowed up life. Hallelujah. Paul now is also talking about the same thing that this our body is a tabernacle and we are going to live every human being must live hallelujah so you can win the spirit when someone receives christ as a lord and personal savior but to win a soul my beloved it takes you know it's a gradual process so salvation is not yet won until your spirit and your soul get one. According to the scripture, you are a spirit being. So when you become born again, as I said earlier, what born again, what happened there is your spirit is what saved, God saved. Because somebody who God saved, who had received Christ, why? is the person continue doing atrocities. Some use human being to do foundation and they call in the name of Jesus. It does it not bother you? What happened? Is, can the Bible lie? Can, is the Bible untrue? No. The Bible is not untrue. Because there is something we do not understand. And by assumption, we are being fed. Many people have believed that immediately someone received Christ. The person got saved entirely why somebody who have salvation who have eternity why do you still behave like a zetan does it not bother you it bothers me that's why i make a this search and by the grace of god the revelation was given a lawyer now let's see the character of someone who have a somebody who is born again remember when you born again, it is your spirit that God saved, not your soul. But let's see the character in the book of Isaiah, Ezekiel 36, verse 26 to 27. Let's see the character. Remember, the character is your inner self. And God said, I, the Lord, I judge the heart, your character, your reputation does not come to God. What matters before God is your character. You know why? Because your character comes from inside you. That is why God said that in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I, the Lord, I search the heart. Your heart is intertwined with your soul. But we are not going there now. Let's go to Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and 27. God bless you. If you can read Amen. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. The character Amen. of somebody who Amen. is born again. A character of somebody who is born again. Let's see how it looks like. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 36, verse 26. Yes, and I will give you a new heart. And I will put and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stone, stubborn heart. Stony. Stony, your stubborn heart. And give you a tender, response, responsive heart. 27. And I will put my spirit in you, so that you will follow my decree and be careful to obey my regulations. Hallelujah. Now, this is the condition of the, the heart or character of someone who is born again. The Bible said that I will give you a new heart. That means when somebody receives Christ, automatically the Holy Spirit do that surgical operation. It is called surgical operation. Automatically, the Holy Spirit done the job. Now, the stony heart, remember when somebody is is not born again he, he it's very difficult to forgive that's why you see muslim people they 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 don't forgive I, i'm telling you the truth they don't easily forgive if, if at all they do forgive so anybody that is not born again you hardly forgive but now the bible says immediately when you receive christ if you start from 25 25 you will know the sprinkle of the water okay now the holy spirit does that operation when somebody receives christ the stony heart he said i will take it away the lord said i the lord i will take it away and i will give you a new spirit a new heart the heart of flesh that is soft to obey my status now the person that can be able to obey god because without this you can't obey god Hallelujah. That is the condition of someone who is born again. The spirit now, the stony heart will be taken away. And a new spirit will that person have. God will do that by himself. And I hope Jesus also, in John 3 verse 5, can you read it? When Nicodemus came to Jesus and talked about to be born again, can you read John 3 verse 5, please? We are dealing on spirit now. We have not get to soul. We are dealing on spirit. John 3 verse 5. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Amen. No one. This is when Nicodemus start, won't permit us to start from the beginning. Nicodemus came to Jesus to ask him how what he can do to enter the kingdom of God. And Jesus answered him, he must be born again. Now, what does it mean to be born again? There are two types here. One, the first one is born again, the birth your mother gave to us. Hallelujah. That's the first bite. And the second bite is what Jesus is talking about here. The bite done by God through the achievable power of the Holy Spirit. That is the one who gave you this second birth. And it's called regenerate, regenerated. Your spirit now have regenerated. Your spirit that was dead became alive. When you receive Christ, the condition that you must receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. That is the condition, the heart of someone who is born again. And that is the only condition one can God save. And many people concentrate on this salvation of the spirit. That is why many people today believe by assumption that when you are, when you, your spirit is saved, that it does not matter about your body, what you do in your body, that one save is saved. This is where error errors where many people are flowing today they do not undermine other scriptures but they focus on this salvation of the spirit when you receive christ it, god it does not matter what you do with your body and all the rest of them that is a fat lie and i don't want anybody hearing the sound of my voice to be part of that hallelujah now 
Let's go back to Ezekiel because Ezekiel 34, verse 12 is talking about God saying, When you they seek me, okay, when you they seek me, they will find me and they will return to the shepherd's fold to Jesus. They will return back to God. That's when we seek him, like somebody who received Christ, okay, now he will regenerate, it. he will come back again through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that person now become born again his spirit now become regenerated that darkness remember we were in darkness and he bought us with precious blood that is when the condition of somebody who is born again but somebody who have not received christ he is total in darkness no matter whatever you may be you might be the president of the whole world but when you have no christ when you have not received christ you are in darkness and the end of that person is total destruction. Jeremiah, can you go to the same Ezekiel 34 verse 12? Hallelujah. Because the Bible said, when they seek me, they will find me and they will return, you know, to shepherd's food, who is our savior. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mommy Amarashi, you are welcome. My thanks for coming. Mommy Stella, God bless you. My thanks for coming. God bless you. So, Ezekiel 34, verse 12 says, How we be like a shepherd looking for his scattering flaws. I will find my sheep and rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on. That dark and clad day. Hallelujah. You see, this is God saying, Are we as a shepherd? You know, you know, a shepherd is one who laid down his life for the flocks, saying he will seek them, he will find them, he will scatter. They have been scattered. Hallelujah. That is why when you receive Christ, when the gospel is preached to you, you receive Christ. What happened? You return back to God. That spirit that was dead, that spirit was cut off, became alive. Now, Paul said in the book of Hebrews, say now let us come boldly into the grace, into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. Now you have petition. Now you can ask God, Habba Father. Now you can call God, Habba Father, my Father, my Heavenly Father, and He hears us because that spirit that was cut off that spirit was dead in dark became alive by the washing of the blood of jesus that is what is called the salvation of the spirit and today by assumption many people call it you know salvation and uh, so winning let's go and with so winning no 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 what happened here is just spirit winning because it is the spirit now that it became alive. When you win a soul, remember the soul take process, which we are going to learn here from this platform later. Soul to win a soul is a gradual process. But when the person begin to hear the word of God, when the person begin to be fed by the word of God, then the person now, the soul will begin to be exactly like Christ. But spirit is immediately, when you receive Christ, immediately, immediately you receive Christ or you confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, your spirit, God save immediately. Now you can come to God. You can ask God. You can do whatever to God. God will hear you. Because that spirit, the blood of Jesus has washed it. Then you have become righteous which is not by merit. It is not by your hard working. It is not by your so your hard labor. It is the gift. Now It is a gift of God. It is, he didn't work for it. It is God's love. Sacrificial. Jesus paid the price to save you from the doom, from damnation. That is what it means. Now your spirit, God save. But your soul, there is still a problem. But by the grace of God, in the next question, we are going to know about that. This is how the spirit, you know, can be won immediately. But the soul is a long process. God bless you.